Good on you, Jared. Yes, it's been talked about all year. Tonight, Chris Judd talks to us about his future as a player of the Blues. Hello and welcome again to On The Couch following round 20 that saw the Tigers and the Eagles continue their charge to the finals and the Crows take the pie spot in the final eight. Chris Judd to join us. And there is great expectation about whether or not he continues his role as a player at the Blues. Michael, what do you think? Look, it's exciting to have Juddy any time, but particularly I think we're going to learn about his future tonight. Mm. I'm very excited. <laughs> I think the groundswell changed a bit too, mm. hasn't it, Mike? Well, it should yeah. have, uh, given what we saw on the weekend. Yeah. You'd be staggered if he doesn't play on. but uh, It's there's... not just that either. The footy team's playing well too, or playing better. It is. There's a, a renewed hope, I think, for the Blues. And if they can get their recruiting right uh, over the next 12 months, Mike, who knows where it'll be. Jason, what did you pick up over the weekend? Uh, I was over in Perth yesterday alongside your good self, Jared, And it's taken a long time. But we can finally say after the last couple of performances that the Eagles are coming. And what I really loved was when Big Dean Cox snapped this goal, the overtly emotional yep. output from both Coxie and all his teammates, there's a real good feeling all of a sudden about the direction they're heading. And the crowd, Jason, they haven't had much to cheer about uh, all year, the Packed Eagles house. supporters. I think they feel that uh, it could be a special finish. Look at that. Oh, it's like yeah. the final sign. You've kicked the winner out to the siren, it is. isn't it? It shows the esteem he's held. And it yeah. shows the improvement yeah. in the psyche of that footy team, too. There was yeah, a suggestion that it may have even been his last game this week, last weekend, and uh, perhaps in two weeks against the Demons. But, oh, uh, I wouldn't think he's going anywhere with the finals, uh, perhaps just around mm. the corner. What did you like across the weekend? Well, I loved Robbie Gray. I thought he kicked the point of the year, <laughs> Jason. I was disappointed it wasn't the goal of the year, but have a look at this. This is just evasive skills at its very best. He is a genius in tight, and I was just so disappointed that that didn't just swerve left to right because it would have been a great contender for goal of the year. But, Mike, uh, on a serious note, you are very concerned, and rightly so. Well, boys, since the head was decreed sacrosanct, I think it's been an invitation to players to drop the scone to buy a free kick. Yep. Now, the latest example is Tommy Lynch, and the fear was that there'd been some serious damage done here. Now, Tommy brought this on himself in footy terms, didn't he? He's got the ball there, he takes it, then he ducks his head yep. into the midriff of a player coming the other way. And I must say, I don't mean to over-dramatise this, Jared, but it did spark immediate memories of Neil Saxey mm. because it was so similar to what rendered Neil Saxey a, a, a quadriplegic. Unfortunately, nothing serious has, uh, has come of it, no, but, but it, we don't like seeing these situations and we encourage the, all players. There's the Neil Saxey instance. See, again, yeah. the head's gone down yeah. uh, and into uh, Kevin O'Keefe's hip and uh, we know the terrible consequences of that. Mm. I think we need to do something about this. This yeah. is not the first time this has come up, but it, it's almost, to me, reaching epidemic proportions. Well, we saw uh, the epidemic continue over the weekend, Mike, but the clear the question one. is, does the AFL go to the extreme level of suspending the player who ducks, not suspending, paying a free kick against the player who ducks his head like I, that? I think, and we're all agreed on this, I think if, if you t choose that option, you are then uh, wait, using up your prior opportunity. Yeah, I also think if you, if you clearly duck, that you should not in any circumstances get a free kick. I think the umpire should be able to just say, you duck your head. Yep. So fair game, anything that happens. But are the umpires calling it correctly? We've seen... Sometimes they are, sometimes they are. There are blatant not. examples there of where the head's just gone down. There are. But, but there's, there's this underlying need to protect the head, as you say. It has yep. become sacrosanct. The umpires never want to forget about protecting the ball player and protecting But the, the more protection you give the, the player doing that, the more you're going to encourage another bloke Correct. to hear, drop his yeah, head. Absolutely. Let's move on to the excitement uh, machines. We've got two to choose from. We'll deal with the Eagles shortly. But the Tigers, Mike, uh, their charge is gathering momentum. I thought they were done and dusted it uh, through the third quarter, but they overpowered the Bombers. Have a look at that, Jason. That's the form ladder from the last six rounds, and there they sit. The yellow and black on top of Geelong, <laughs> Sydney and Hawthorne. Now, I mean, you can have soft draws, yep. but you still have to win six in a row. That's yeah, not easy to do. You can only beat the teams put in front of you. And they finally stepped it up on Friday night when they got hold of the Bombers. And it's great because all those teams that are fighting out seventh and eighth spot and ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, they're all playing each other in mm. the run home. You know which means love, we're going to get the best team in there. You know how I love to travel to see the big games? I'll be in Adelaide this week, Jared. And you're making an official announcement on the couch. <laughs> uh, I got another question uh, from Subiaco on the weekend, Mikey. You're going to grace them with your presence at any <laughs> stage this century. But they're going to see a great
great game. Eventually, uh, essentially, it is a final. The Tigers uh, will take on St Kilda and Sydney in round 23, but they must win this one. Jason, I asked you two weeks ago, I said it's mathematically possible for Richmond to play finals. Is it yep. plausible? Have you changed your mind? Uh, well, I tipped them on Friday night, and I was very pleased to see them get up there. But I think I'm talking uh, in the finals context now. Yeah, they've got to go to Sydney in the last round, don't they? Should round they'll have some momentum if they're uh, eight, uh, eight nil. At ANZ Stadium, it was a funny round. Uh, round 23, mm. when sides are safely packed away in the top two. Yep. Maybe they don't put in their best side. We saw Fremantle do it with St Kilda last year. If they get over Adelaide, the charge is going to be irresistible. Yeah. Talking about Adelaide, I want to ask both of you about Brenton Sanderson's comments before and after the game. Mm. Up in Brisbane at the weekend. I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve from them. Let's have a listen to what he mm. said and we'll draw our conclusions. Anytime you get a game scheduled in Brisbane in, in August, you're going to have hot conditions and we've got an interchange cap of 120. So unfortunately, you know, the, the AFL promote player safety and we've got uh, a very hot day and in, interchange cap. Uh, we were down to two on the bench before half time. Mm. And uh, in this heat, in the middle of, uh, you know, playing a game here in Brisbane in the middle of August, in the middle of the day, is just baffling. But anyway, and then we've got a six-day break going into Richmond. Um, to our players' credit, they really just knuckled down. Yeah, six-day break coming off this hot game with limited rotations. Uh, it'll be a challenge for us. Let me ask you the rationale here. Now, is he he's saying... Like it was an alibi for his players because it's hot. Well, it was 25 degrees. I never realised. I never realised August was the middle of summer. <laughs> <laughs> they play practice games in, in, uh, in 35 yeah, degrees. Correct. And the other one, two or three times he mentioned the six-day breaks. Is he sowing a negative seed in the minds of his own players? Yeah, that's that's why I said I don't understand what he's trying to achieve from these comments. I think you've you've banked a hundred-point win. You say, look, it was terrific. We've got a little bit of work to do to recover, but we're happy with the way we're going. Rather than and 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 also talking about the interchange cap, Jerry, I found. Uh, extraordinary. Well, I did too, Jason, because I checked how many interchanges they had. They uh, had 31 up their sleeve. They were 13 fewer than any other club over the weekend. I know they had two injuries, but that doesn't prevent you from rotating Correct. the guys that up to are on the bench. Particularly if you're worried about the And if you're worried about the heat, yeah. why would you leave 31 interchange up your sleeve? There's one other minor matter that happened up in Brisbane. Adelaide kicked nine goals in the last quarter. Wouldn't indicate much fatigue to me. No, they had complete control. <laughs> and I'm with you, Mike. I, I, I don't uh, think Santa makes too many blues, but to me that was a negative preparing for a loss rather than a positive mm. inciting mm. a victory. I agree. So what agree. would you think if you were in the Richmond camp right now? In the Richmond camp, I'd be saying they're giving themselves an excuse to lose. And I'd be excited about that because mm. uh, they get in front early in the piece or it's tied at three-quarter time. You'd be asking yourself, well, they don't believe uh, they've got a physical yep. advantage. We do. Now, before you jump on me, I want to say how good Brett Delidio was mm, this against taken, the Bombers. This has taken a long time. Well, not necessarily. Now, here's the, the start of the match, right? Yeah. He's a one-on-one -on -one contest which he wins, and he wins it on his strength, and then he finishes and gives him the perfect start. Played a different role. He played yep. predominantly as a forward. Yep, and I'll play him there all the time because he's got so much skill. I actually thought, you, you, you say that I've seen the light. I say that he's doing things now that he hasn't previously done. Well, I just think that uh, you're selective in your vision, Mike. I know you're a myopic Mike occasionally, and I think you are with Brett, but uh, the good news is he's playing really good form, along with a few others like Ellis, etc. But the issue for that game was the wastefulness of the Bombers. Their third quarter was horrendous, and if this doesn't improve, there's no way they'll be playing finals and they won't beat the Eagles. That's true. No, they, they did have the opportunities to win this game, didn't they? Oh, look, you can't wait these sort of opportunities and expect to win a game of footy. Particularly against another team yep. that's hungry and wants to play finals. It's, some of the decision making was poor. Some of the execution at critical stages was poor. And they just shot themselves in the foot time and again. But this is a lot better Richmond team than we saw previously. Yeah. It is, it, it, Essendon didn't just squander this game. The Tigers won it. They're though. playing with some speed though, Mike. And it's uh, very similar to what we saw yesterday, Jason, with the Eagles. I'm not sure what has changed with Adam Simpson. But uh, the speed of ball movement was so similar to what we've seen with the Tigers over the last three or four weeks. Yeah, we saw them do it uh, two weeks ago in Adelaide. They beat Adelaide that way. But it was funny because if you only cast your mind back a week, Collingwood played Port Adelaide at the G. And every time Port tried to square it up in the middle and use the corridor, Collingwood closed yep. it down. Their pressure was outstanding. That pressure was missing yesterday. And when the Eagles got into the corridor, they just opened Collingwood up and they went from one end to the other a number of times. They hit targets leading out from goal straight up the middle. But I thought, I thought it was impressive 
ball movement. It's the sort of ball movement we've been looking for. Their midfield got involved. We've yeah. been criticising their midfield for most of the season, but I thought they were terrific the way they dominated. Yeah, their uh, ball inside the corridor was adventurous. It uh, was very much like what we've seen with Richmond, and it's quite simple, Mike. Speedy ball movement yeah. gives the forwards an opportunity. Yeah. And risk-reward. If you're prepared to take the risk and your skills are on, you get the reward. Well, this is the one from a kick-out where they went end-to-end. -end, straight down the middle. And Collingwood, look, the pressure's virtually non-existent. Frost makes a, a pretty average decision to leave his man, but he was exposed. There was the, no pressure whatsoever. Compared to the week before where it was the pressure that actually won Collingwood the game, they left it. I want to take you back to June 2nd, Mike. Round 11. Mm -hmm. uh, at that stage, the Eagles, who won the first three, were four and seven. We asked you to do a ladder. It was an unusual ladder. <laughs> it was uh, a ladder of shame. The upside-down ladder. How did I go? The performance I saw from West Coast yesterday, on top of what we've seen so far this year, says that they are as bad as Richmond's been this year, and maybe even worse, given their soft draw and given the decisive home ground advantage. The most there. disappointing side. I think they are. The rest of them are pretty uh, much predictable, I think. I mean, clearly, you go to the other end, Port Adelaide, and I think Gold Coast have been the two best performers yep. of the year to date. Richmond uh, defies logic to think that someone could have performed worse than they it's have. Badly, but my it? view about this is I had West Coast in the finals, and I didn't have Richmond in my mm -hmm. eight. So on the balance of my expectations, West Coast are now head the ladder of shame. You've shamed them into performance, Mike. Since then, they've yep. won four. Do you mean that? Yeah, absolutely. They've won four, <laughs> lost. Uh, so in fact, they've won five and lost four. Hey, they've got to, to win three. If they win three, they're in. I'm happy to stand by that. Mm. I mean, this, the form that we've seen from those two clubs in the last six or eight weeks is immeasurably better than it was to that point. I love the fact that you have stuck them into action, though. The two that you're most critical of are the ones that are charging. And the two that you'd wrapped up are the ones that are really starting to wobble. But that just shows you what happens throughout the course of the season. It's certainly not your based on I'm what trying you, to stick up for Based it, on what you saw, will the Eagles... Eagles uh, beat Essendon on the weekend. They'll go close. They'll go close. They've got their confidence up and their marking forwards are marking the ball and they're presenting. We had a chat to Adam Simpson on the boundary yep. line beforehand and the thing that stood out to me was A, he didn't know what he was going to get and I guess yep. he'd be a little bit nervous given they've been up and down. But B, Shannon Hearn, he didn't expect would get the licence to dominate the first quarter that he did. Well, we'd seen him so good the week before. And he said, he, he was almost sarcastic, he said to us, oh, do you reckon he'll get that much space today? And then we see him in the first quarter, ends up with double figure possessions, running around virtually unmanned, involved in most of the scores. He was just, he, and he delivers the ball so well, he's not the bloke you allow to run loose. Now let me ask you, you saw it firsthand. Yep. No one prepares better than Nathan Buckley. But have, all, they, have, a, have they, a look at this. They clearly chose to let him run free. They did. And they got punished. He's had 11 touches in the first term, four score involvements. Nine of them were uncontested. And he's the longest kick in the competition. Yeah. And one of their best. Tyson okay. Golsack went on to him after uh, midway through the second quarter and he locked down on him. I thought Buck's got it wrong. I reckon he'd admit that he got it wrong because it just gave them an opportunity to get a head start. But their lethargy was frightening, Collingwood. I haven't seen them play uh, as bad as that on the back of an impressive win for some time. They were flat. So some suggestion they had the flu, flu yeah. but <clears throat> not for mine. Now, don't get excited, Jerry, but I'm going to raise the name of Nick Nat. Now, Danui, you talked about lethargy. His lethargy's gone. That was the old Nick Nat. Last, mm. The last two weeks, but particularly yesterday, was the athlete that we all raved over for the first couple of years. Yeah, the great surprise here that is that it's you making the statement and not Jared. Well, right? I, yeah, but I told you it was my turn. This is yeah. the sort of form we like seeing Nick Nat in because it's his efforts at ground level, it's his efforts around the ground, not just the high leap and tap it out to someone. We know he can do that. But when he gets involved at other levels, then they're a much better team. But yeah. this is something that most players uh, are able to do. Show Not their, sure he should have played on, Jerry. Show their best when they're fit. The guy's had an Achilles. He's had an interrupted start. Yeah. This was always going to happen. I mean, he's been called illiterate. He's been called uh, an athlete only, can't play football, etc. Is it fair to play blokes when they're not right? Well, I don't think it is, Mike, but sometimes uh, form dictates, and right now the Eagles are pretty skinny. We'd all forgotten how good he was, I reckon, except for Jared. <laughs> don't you reckon? Uh, I tell you what, there's a bloke that sits at his feet that goes OK too. Did <laughs> yeah. you see the performance of Matt Prince? Well, he goes well, well, he goes well all the and time. And he does but... this every week, yep. and he does it every year, yep. and yet he's never been All-Australian. Is that a case of out of sight, out of mind? I think it's a case of just how difficult it is, but this bloke has continued to wear down, I think, the selectors, and surely it's time this year that he does get recognised. He'll win their best and fairest by a country mile. In fact, I think he's elevated his game because the Eagles around him haven't been that strong mm. and uh, he has maintained his he's performance. Will that be three best and fairest for him? 
It'd be, uh, well, I think he's a multiple. I'm not yeah. sure how many it would be. Look, he's, he's not brilliant at any one thing, is he, except other than getting the footy. <laughs> but he's not particularly well. quick, and he doesn't kick it a long way, but he just gets the footy uh, 35 times a game. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this All-Australian saw a record number of uh, first uh, winners. And I'll just give you a back line. Mm -hmm. Hooker, McKenzie. Nick McKenzie we saw again yesterday. Eric McKenzie. Eric yeah. McKenzie, I should say. He was a star again. Yep. Uh, Nick Smith. Uh, Mel Chesky, Talia, and uh, Brody, Brody Smith. Smith. And if you want to throw in another one, Pierce Hanley from uh, Brisbane Lions. No, none of they all have none in common? None, none have ever played yeah. before. Yeah. So the back six could be all first timers. Yep. What about uh, Jordan Lewis? Has he been all Australian? He's an outstanding year. One the final first. Do you go close? Yeah. You throw in Robbie Gray, Robbie Gray Gunston, yep. Bruce, Luke Parker, Bryce Gibbs, Rockcliffe, and your man Jordan Lewis, and your other man uh, Rockcliffe. I've got a lot of men, Jordan. You have. And, and one from left field. I think we, do, we don't acknowledge much at, out of North Melbourne. I think Ben Cunningham's had a great year. Don't I haven't, seen, the, oh, I haven't <laughs> seen that much of them. <laughs> but like that. Oh, I think he's been consistent. Can, are we letting Collingwood off the hook, though? No, we're That's about what to I, uh, I, I think we need to put the microscope on them a little bit more. They had an opportunity to get themselves back in the eight. And when you look at some of the ball use, it was inexcusable. And, and these kicks aren't even under that much pressure. But the number of times they kicked it to the opposition or kicked it out of bounds is beyond me. Jared, you were glass half full last week, and vigorously so. Yeah, I still how's am. Your, how's your glass looking now? Well, you climb Mount Everest, Mike, not every step is up. And uh, they took a backward step. They were, they were poor. They were worse than poor. They were lethargic. They let themselves down. And whether or not they had the flu or not, they were uncompetitive in the first quarter. But I'm not looking about this season. I think they took decisions at the end of last year to say, we're building for a premiership. We have to go back to go forward. And if they can maintain a spot in the eight, which they'll need to reclaim or go close, it's a pretty good year for the Pies. I want to show you something you've never seen before. We spoke about some bad kicks. The pressure was that good from the Eagles. We saw a couple of blokes that are the best in the business yep. handball it directly to the opposition. Mm -hmm. There's Scott Pendlebury. He goes to hold his head afterwards. He goes, I can't believe I've done that. And there's Dane Beans. Two hand passes straight to the opposition. You would never see that. Isn't it amazing the mindset, the change in it, though, from West Coast? There were West Coast blokes swarming a Collingwood player every time he had yep. the footy yesterday. It was brilliant. I want to ask you about, you're talking about Collingwood and, and the improvement. But Cloakie, Travis Cloak. I didn't say the Collingwood would have improved. I think no, they're going they, backwards. They need to improve. Absolutely, do they, not? they need okay. to. Okay, is he going to improve? Well, he needs to, Mike. If you compare his uh, numbers to uh, an All-Australian year 2011, he is miles off the pace. His accuracy is about 44%. He's winning the ball only on about 25%. Hawkins is up around 40%. He's getting a lot of ball given to him. At the moment, I think he's down on confidence. He's not propelling himself through the final few metres. But you played in his position, Jason. What was your assessment? I think he needs to go further afield because I think in particular when he's playing on someone like Eric McKenzie, he plays into his hands by playing deep because he's only got the short lead basically as his weapon and McKenzie troubled him for speed. That wasn't his weapon uh, three years ago. He no. used to get up on the wing and an get his foot. Yeah. I agree. Jared, who won more, the four points aside, who won more out of the game between Geelong and Frio? Because I suspect Frio and looking mm. at Ross Lyon, he was pretty pleased with the effort he saw. Well, they got the effort back, didn't they? They yeah. got uh, the pressure back. They got their game back and... They could have won. It was a kick uh, after the siren. It didn't go through. So they will go in, Jason, uh, to the next three weeks with renewed hope. But they've two big losses, lost too. a man, and it's yeah. a big hole to They fill. lost the four points. They lost Luke McFarlane. I'm really fearful of, of their September campaign if McFarlane's not part of it. A fit McFarlane, it's and I don't believe he can be. It's a big hole, isn't it, both in his calf and in the back <laughs> line. But they get Michael Walters back this week, which is a big in, given that uh, Hawthorne are depleted in their forward line. Mm. The Dockers had a lot of, uh, plenty of opportunities to kick a winning score. The second quarter they dominated, didn't they? Well, their inside 50s, uh, Mike, would have been a real concern for uh, Ross Lyon. They just butchered the ball. And uh, it's, I guess, taking away some of the intercept marks from Harry Taylor, who was a blinder, had a blinder. But uh, Corey Enright, gladly he's now reconsidering whether or not he plays on uh, next year because he's starting to find some form. I think a flag would probably put him away, though. <laughs> he's got three. Well, I think <laughs> the, the decision's his, isn't it? I like that. The fact that Geelong yep. have said you've been good enough over that many years the decision's yours given they had chances to win uh, who deserved the points do you think the team that wins usually does doesn't it but the, but they had two chances Matthew Pavlich had one which really interested me you know my sense of history yes is Pav 
on the 50. That's a good effort. That's a beautiful oh, that's a kick. kick. Hits the post. Now, go back, I think, four or five years. Pav was in a similar situation, this time in Perth. Same team, same opposition. Different post. Same result. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and what's your point, Mike? That was well, back the in point 08. Being, I mean, he kicks that, they win. Yeah. David Mundy kicks it and misses by a foot, they win. That's so, true. And we're talking about how good Frio are and beware of them again in the finals. So you've jumped back on them? No, no, no. I'm just that's Seven days ago, you said they couldn't win. I'm not saying they can win. I'm right. just saying I'm talking about how they could have won this game on Saturday. Does Stevie Johnson need to stop putting himself in situations that might no. cause him to miss footy? Look, I, I love watching the bloke play. He's so entertaining. Why is he always in these sort of situations, Mike? Now, let me ask you this. Stevie Johnson got off this today, and I love Stevie Johnson. And we all do. We all do. But he kicked him. Well, he pushed him with the leg. <laughs> well, what I'm saying, oh, I don't See, think. What, what look, no, I don't think that? that was. I don't think that was a bad kick. But no. what I'm saying is, but it was, why, yeah. even, kick why, why even get in these situations? Him? He pushed him with the leg. He pushed him, did he? Yeah, with the leg. Just nudged him off. What's your definition of a kick? A kick. He would have kicked his. I head reckon off you're going to get a mention in Mike's mad minute. Looking forward to that uh, coming up. <laughs> Chris Scott uh, had a chat uh, after the match about Ryan Crowley and Steve Johnson. The, the one thing that Jono's got to understand, he has to, is that he's a better player than these blokes. In terms of Ryan's impact on the game, um, no, I didn't watch him all that closely offensively, but I don't think he had a big impact, did he? If any. Well, he, he had a big impact. Kept him to Stevie 15. Johnson to 15. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you take him literally, he was talking about offensively, so he, uh, he didn't do much with the That's ball. That's not his primary role, No, no it no. isn't. Uh, you sat down with uh, a couple of famous coaches are going head-to-head -head on the weekend. An intriguing hour yesterday with, uh, with Alistair Clarkson and Ross Lyon, and I asked both of them about uh, the aforementioned Ryan Crowley. <laughs> Does he get a bad press, Ross? Ryan I Crowley? So. Yeah, I, he certainly plays within the laws of the game. He certainly plays within the laws yeah, of the I game, does he? Yeah, he doesn't hold, really. I wouldn't have he doesn't thought. hold? No, I wouldn't have thought. Clark, would you like to have Ryan Crowley on your list? I haven't had much to do with, uh, with him off the field, um, but from what I can gather, he's hugely regarded by his teammates and all those that have had anything to do with him. So what I admire about those sorts of guys is they um, good citizens off the ground and do what's required for their team to sacrifice when they get on the ground. What's lost with him? He's a big man. He's like 192, 94 kilos, runs all day. He's, so when they physically get after him, he doesn't flinch. He's, he's tough. More of that uh, extensive interview uh, prior to the Twilight match uh, on Fox Footy. Hawthorne versus Frio. It's a uh, continuation of another great round. I'm looking forward to about five games next weekend. Mm. Port Adelaide uh, and the Swans. I reckon the Port boys would be confident. A bit like Frio, they got their mojo back. The pressure was back. The run was back, Jason. Perfect analogy. We were worried about Frio. Were they going to find form? I'd seen the last five or six weeks of Port, and I thought they'd just about hit the wall. They took it up to Sydney, and their pressure was so good that all of a sudden Sydney didn't play the game on their own terms like they like to. They didn't control the flow of the footy. And in actual fact, Port Adelaide had chances to win this mm. game. They, unfortunately, didn't make the most, and they kicked, uh, I think it was 7-16, might have had four complete misses and the 26-point margin at the end of the game I think was a bit harsh on them. But we're seeing efforts here yep. that were synonymous with their first 12 weeks of the season yep. that had disappeared. But maybe, and you said it last week, Jared, when I said they had that week to freshen up, you said it takes two weeks to turn it around. I'm glad you remembered that, Jason, <laughs> because it did take a couple of weeks. I was impressed with your thoughts on uh, Homstow. His job yep. on Buddy Franklin was first class. Well, I reckon this bloke could be seen in the coming years as one of the great recruiting coups mm. of all time. They trade, I think they traded away pick number 28 to get him a couple of years ago from GWS. GWS. This is a key position defender, a key defender that you don't find very often. Doing a job on the best forward in the game, one of the best players in the game that can be damaging. And Buddy wasn't terrible. He kicked a couple of goals and he competed hard and had his 15 possessions. But the number of one-on-one -on -one contests that Jack Holmes was able to win I thought it was outstanding. A few blokes have got away from GWS that are pretty handy. Well, they had so many. Mm. They were always going to mm. pick a few away, weren't yeah. they? How can you get a game at GWS off? Yeah. Yeah, did you see, did you see Kurt Tippett's game as well? It wasn't a big influence, but he did a couple of key things. And one of them was a goal from a stoppage. And I'll tell you something about this goal. Have a look at the goal square. No key. If this yeah. was at the other end of the ground and it was in Port's forward line, there'd be a sweeper mm -hmm. for Sydney sitting back in the goal square. So what happens? Tippett uses his strength, grabs the ball, throws it on the boot. Nobody there. It's good agility for a big bloke, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. But just a little thing to think about. 
Sydney, regardless of how many players are there, they'll find someone able to drop off and be that sweeper. Right, now let's talk to Juddy, Jared. <laughs> Let's get Juddy on. He's going to join us, Mike, <laughs> with a pen in hand and a contract. We hope. <laughs> Straight after this on the couch. Judd, out of the centre quickly. Judd goes a second time. Beautiful handball from Judd to Williams. He sets up for another goal. Sees a play in the goal square, great vision, goal, Wilson. And he's got a head on his shoulder for someone playing his first game. Gee, I, I think we're seeing a star of the future here today. That is poise under pressure. Oh. Here's Judd, he can take it, he can straighten up and go bang! My advice to all players, go when there's a little bit left. Well, that comment from Mick Malthouse was analysed within an inch of its life. We can find out just how the tank is right now and what the gauge says. Welcome to you, Chris. Thanks for having me. How is the gauge? Uh, is there enough left to go on? Because from what I saw on the weekend, you should be signing a uh, multi-year deal. Yeah, thank you. Well, I hope so. Um... You know, I, I agree with Mick. I, I certainly want to leave when there's a little bit left in the tank, but, um, you know, not when there's sort of half a tank left. So uh, I spoke with the club today and, and going to go on next year. So, um, you know, we've got to get through the next three games and have a clean bill of health at the end of the season. But uh, barring any unforeseen injury, we'll be back in next year. You bounced into the studio. We haven't <laughs> seen you do that uh, in all of your time here. <laughs> you look as if you're a refreshed man. You've got a beaming smile on the face. It, uh, you look like you found God, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike said I've got two young kids at home, so I've just played it smart and signed a contract to get out of looking after them for another year. So, uh, no, but we're really excited about it. It's, uh, the footy club's starting to, to turn a bit of a corner and, and playing some decent footy, so um, yeah, things are good. Congratulations, mate. Great decision, great for all the Carlton fans. They'll love it. But I suspect it's been a major mind shift for you. If you cast your mind back when you had a slow start of the season, first game back, you tore the hammy. I reckon in the mind at that particular stage, you might have thought, I've just about had enough. Yeah, I mean, four or five months ago, I'd, I'd made the decision to, to retire um, and was really definitive definitive yep. on it and, and clear and for a number of reasons thought it was the, the right decision um, and then to be honest I didn't even think about it until probably four weeks ago because the decision had been made um, you know I was planning what I was going to do next year um, and then I guess just circumstances sort of changed a bit three or four weeks ago um, and you know I've been speaking quite a lot to Mick in the last couple of weeks and Force me to have a rethink, and uh, yeah, as I said, if, if things go to plan the next three weeks, I'll be back back next year. So a month ago, you were gone, weren't you? Yeah. 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 It was clear in your mind. Had you uh, advised Mick and the people at Carlton? I'd spoken to some people at Carlton, and I mean, I'd told all my family and and friends that uh, that I was done. Um, and once I make a decision, I'm really good at finding evidence as to why it's a good decision, and hence I'm able to follow through with it wholeheartedly. So I was sort of going through that process. Um, and then as I said, yeah, just circumstances changed and I thought there's no use being stubborn about it and, and here we are. So what did Vex say when you said uh, I'm the house husband from next year? Uh, is, she, is she pleased? Does she want you to play on? She's pretty neutral. She was initially really surprised uh, that I was thinking about going on because I'd been so clear that wasn't going to happen. Um, but look, she's, she's really supportive and... and uh, you know, most happy husband, happy life doesn't rhyme, but I, I guess it's the same as happy wife, happy life. So, uh, she's, uh, look, she's happy if, if I'm happy. You uh, came to Carlton with a view, I suspect, to win a flag at two clubs. Uh, if you leave Carlton without a flag, will it be a, a great personal blow? Uh, yeah, there'll be, it'll certainly be disappointing. Um, that was, the, that was the, the task set, that was the measure of if, if my time at Carlton was successful. Um, so, yeah, there'd, there'd be an element of disappointment if that doesn't happen in my time. So there's been a lot of discussion given uh, Mick Malthouse's comments about where the Blues were initially. Uh, where are you as a club? Where do you see yourselves as a competitive unit? Yeah, well, I think there's been a, a, a real uh, turning of the corner, if you like, probably the last six or seven weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably one of the other reasons that I've been enjoying my footy so much. It's probably the first time in uh, the seven years I've been at the club where there's a real evenness in the competitiveness of the playing group, if you like. Um, 
where you know you're running on the field with the 22 guys playing with you, and you, you, you're generally confident that they all really want to win. And that sounds like it is grade two learner stuff and should always happen, but that probably hasn't always been the case at that mm. footy club. And, and that's that makes for footy to be a really enjoyable game when that is happening. And you know we're not confused as to where we sit. We're 13th on the ladder and have a lot of improving to do. But I, I think. You know, we're at a, a bit of a point that uh, some things have uh, changed for the better. Two part question. Firstly, looking ahead to your personal year next season, do you want any sort of role change? Do you expect to spend the same amount of time in midfield or do you want to spend more time forward perhaps? I expect probably a similar sort of role, um, but talking to Mick, you know, I probably don't expect to try and play 22 games. Um, so that's something we'll nut out in the next three, four, five weeks and whether we shoot for 18 home and away games or, or whatever it be, um, that's probably where the tinkering will occur. And a few weeks ago, a certain journalist, might have been Robbo, suggested <laughs> you could do some good run with roles. How, <laughs> how receptive would you have been to that? <laughs> An expert commentator, Robbo. That was a... Uh, I actually saw that article, so that was an interesting oh, one. I so see you are reading <laughs> Yeah, I've, look, we've all got to grow, Mike. But, uh, <laughs> no, I've, I've changed a lot of things. I'm, I'm reading articles now, so uh, times have changed. I want to ask you, you finished your six-year contract at the end of 2013. Yes. This year, did you go to Carlton and say you were prepared to take a 50% pay cut? Going into this year? Yep. Well, I took a pay cut, yeah, but I don't talk numbers. Um, Ballpark. Publicly, Ballpark. yeah, Ballpark. around about that. Cut yeah. in half. That's a, uh, and it was your initiative. Well, I don't, I don't. I mean, w I don't think it was argued over, if I recall. And I mean, we, well, of course, I mean, they're not going to argue over it if they've saved half of your money. Yeah, but that's probably that was probably fair enough. I mean, I haven't even discussed terms with them on this new agreement, which is probably a pretty poor strategic <laughs> move commercially. <laughs> but um, look, you know, I'm sure the club will be fair, and I'll be fair, and, and we'll get on with with next year. My objective is to not try and squeeze every dollar out of the footy club. It's to to try and contribute and, and enjoy another year at, at Carlton. Jolly, how do you think Mark Murphy's thrived since taking over the captaincy? He's, he's doing a great job. He's, uh, you know, he's really grown into it and I think you know, me stepping aside has, has been a real positive to give blokes like him, Kate Simpson, Andrew Carazzo, that room to grow and, and, and emerge as really strong leaders in our footy club that uh, I think our footy club's are a lot stronger for it. So tell us about Jeff Garlett and Mitch Robertson and uh, how you deal with them as a leadership uh, group, how you deal with them personally and whether or not you think there's a role for them next year. Yeah, look, I think there is a role for them next year. Um, You've got to try and keep these things in perspective. They're out, they're out late, and and they got bashed. Uh, they didn't assault anyone. Mm. Um, their, their crime is being out late, um, and I'm sure all of us on the couch have been out at five o'clock in the morning. Um, we just weren't unlucky enough to get assaulted. So sometimes it's important to keep these things in perspective. The issue was. Um, the mistruths that, that came along with that, mm. um, and that was the disappointing part. What parts. do you mean, Chris? What do you mean by that? Well, they weren't completely forthright that they were both there. Oh, I see. That they didn't own up. Yeah, 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 yeah. the lies. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mistruths was a, a <laughs> cute way of terming yeah. it. But um, look, and, and that you, that's born out of um, you know the pressure that's on on young footy players this, these days, which is a, a pretty unusual environment. But that was a bit disappointing. But look, those guys have four weeks to, to really earn back the respect of our playing group and, and we certainly haven't drawn the line through them. If Mick said to you, Juddy, what, you, what should we do with Mitch Robinson? Should we burn him or keep him? What would you say? Uh, well, I think he's still got plenty to offer our footy club. OK. Yeah. Talking about futures of two other blokes, Jared Waite and Matthew Cruiser. Yep. Uh, Waite will stay, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I really think he should. Um, should the club offer him two years to make sure he does stay? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really not my area of, of expertise. Um, but he's certainly playing great footy for us. He's a respected member of the group, and he's incredibly important. Um, and I think after all he's been through with the footy club um, in terms of the lean years, I think it would be a uh, it would be a smart decision on his behalf to, to be a part of what's coming as well. Are we going to see the best? I mean, we Cruz is a number one draft pick. Yep. Looked like he was going to be a star. Do you expect that we will see the best of him at some time in the not too distant future? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you know the older I get um, in footy, the sort of the less impressed I am with talent and the the 
less I think it, it's, it's important in achieving success and uh, you know Cruz obviously has talent but the, the thing that's really important with Cruz is his competitiveness and his ambition and uh, he's got incredible drive to achieve and I think in the long run that'll um, that'll hold him in really good stead. The other bloke who's got uh, a little bit of everything but uh, he's got a bit of a flaw in his kicking is Levi Casbell. Now you've had some early history with him but he, he seems to be one of your most improved players. He has. He's going really well. He's um you know, as you say, he's got his warts, but his kicking's actually improved a lot and continues to improve, and he's markings at a really high standard. So, um, you know, we just need to make sure he doesn't taper off for the end of the year. He's probably in his first full season, and uh, in your first full season, you start to get a, bit, a little bit tired at this time of the year, but um, we need him to really finish off strongly that he, so that he goes into next year in, uh, in good nick. You've been the consummate professional for so long in every aspect of the game. But is there anything about the game or the lifestyle of a footballer that you'd love to change or that you don't like? Oh, there is. There's challenges. But I think when you're in a, a fortunate enough and, and really privileged position that, that I am and that other footy players are, it's... Um it sounds a bit sooky if you complain too much publicly <laughs> about the challenges because we look we have a great job we get remunerated remunerated well to be be fit and healthy and and do something we love with uh with our mates so um complaining about things publicly is probably a bad look <laughs> johnny we talked before about players ducking their heads in the belief that uh, if you put it down and get hit, you're going to get a free kick is it a problem for the game um What's well, a problem for the blokes if they duck down and they get knocked out? Yeah, but they're prepared uh, to take that risk, aren't they? Yeah, but I, the good thing about it is I don't think the umps have been paying that many free kicks for it this year. I think years gone by, blokes were doing that and getting free kicks. I think this year blokes are doing that and they're, sometimes they're hurting themselves, but they're not really getting free kicks. Tommy Nitch got a free kick and clearly put his head down into an oncoming opponent, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he did, but I, I reckon it's been... Um, Less common that they would you support paid. that being a free kick against Lynch? No, not a running to someone with your head in mm. their guts. Oh, I don't know, I haven't thought about it too much. Probably not. I, to add in too many rules, I think it'll sort itself out. If you're not mm. getting a free kick and you're breaking your neck, you'll stop doing it pretty quickly. <laughs> um, oh, that's so. a solution, yeah. <laughs> now, Mike put together a little package of your tackles. And yeah. he, wanted, he wanted me to bring oh, it I up because right. he was worried about it. <laughs> oh, did, yeah. About yeah. grabbing an arm of a player. Now, we, and we see a number of these. It's a great way to stop them getting a hand pass away. Yeah. But you've just got to be careful how far you actually drag the arm. These are just, I, I suspect it's not a particular strategy or tactic of yours. It just happens that's the part of the body you can grab. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, glad you put together this package, Mike. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, it's not a, it's not been a conscious um, strategy, but it's certainly an effective way to stop them getting rid of the ball. You're a squib, you are. Oh. <laughs> what about free agency? Uh, is it good or bad for clubs, or is it just too early to tell? Um... Yeah, I think we're still in the teething process, but I, I think uh, I think overall it was important. Yeah, I liked hard. I, I can't remember exactly what Hardwick's view on it yeah. was, but I remember reading that and thinking that it had some merit. Can you remember what his view was? Well, uh, I think what he said uh, was that it should be limited to the sides outside of the top four. That's right. So that's, that's a good rule until we get in the top four. And that's right. right. <laughs> Chris, how did my nephew go uh, the weekend? He went well. Kieran. Kieran was he went great yeah. actually yeah I didn't realise he was your nephew yeah, claiming him mate my Irish nephew yeah, yeah. 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 wait until he's yeah, uh, we bounced must the look, ball a like the times. Irish kids they can, they can all kick can't they yeah it's amazing um, can he bounce though no he can't <laughs> bounce yet have a look at that one it's a remarkable effort um, you know 14 games of footy I mean even the first the first game AFL players usually probably played 200 games of footy from all their junior games so for him to do what he did after 14 games was a, was a great effort and he's just got to stay hungry now and, and keep improving for us and be bigger and better next year. Can the Blues play finals next year? Yeah, look, you know, of course we can. At this stage, 18 teams can. Mm. It's, it's one of those questions journos love asking. Um, <coughs> the important thing is for us is we keep improving. We know there's a, a big gap between us and the good teams and we need to improve as, as quickly as possible. And that, that's our focus. And Who, wins the flag? Who wins the flag? This year, <laughs> yep. Sydney. For mine. Okay. And a Thanks. word on the Gold yeah. Coast, who uh, didn't bring their best game against the Blues on the weekend. Yeah, I like the Gold Coast. I, I think a lot of their kids are, are, are good players now and going to be really good players. They just seemed like they were they were starting to tire a bit. Yeah. I think. Yep. Chris, you've been great tonight. 
It's uh, been good to see you smiling and effusive in your thoughts, and it's great to have uh, one of the greats continuing his career for another 12 months. Uh, thanks for your time tonight, and good luck for next year. Thanks, Sammy. Thanks, Juddy. Chris Judd, our special guest. Plenty more to come, including uh, the couch's favourite player. ever take a hanger that uh, was as uh, it's that far away from an illegal mark Jason it reminded me of Warwick, Warwick Capper exactly right nice sense of theatre wasn't it to <laughs> it let was. four of those breaches go through <laughs> what about Bernie Vance to look on his face <laughs> really did a little bloke just take a big hanger on me <laughs> Mike we sent you out on assignment to uh, have a chat to Poppy but before that uh, I haven't seen Chris Judd as uh, relaxed and as excited about footy as uh, he was only a few yeah, weeks ago we all had the same view didn't we so he's refreshed and it yeah. was just he gave everything and I think there's a weight lifted now that he's made the decision. It's out there. Everyone knows he's playing on. It's brilliant. Yep. We have uh, adopted Poppy as yeah, our favoured son, and uh, it's been difficult to get him on the couch. It's been a busy year, so we thought before season's end, before he becomes a potentially another Premiership player, Mike, we'd send you out to find out a little bit more about the little fellow we call Poppy. We've shown heaps of you rundown tackles on the couch. Which one's your favourite? Probably in my first year was the Gold Coast game. We were <laughs> we probably nearly lost that game. I think it was just a run down the wing where I was sort of playing as a defender and the ball got kicked over my, my head and one of my teammates has run forward and he left the guy running back so I had to get on my bike and go and I think around about 60, 70 metres to run him down holding wow. the ball. Oh, look at the chase oh. When you chase someone, you chase them with meaning, don't you? Even if it looks impossible that you can catch them, you'll sit off after them, won't you? Yeah, definitely. Clarko has this mentality of everyone playing their role, and he goes, if you can just do this for us, it's massive. I guess that's sort of what I said, I've said to myself, I want to be probably be the best at it, and um, that's what I'm trying to do now, is just be the best at that role. You are below all over him. If a kid came to you, one of the younger boys came to you, and said he needed to improve the defensive side of his game, particularly the tackle, what would you instruct him to do? I guess it's just that they want to bring that person down. I think that's it. everyone's got the ability to tackle someone. It's just that, that hunger to take him down. That's do you go for the hips? I'll go for whatever I can grab onto. <laughs> <laughs> and then where would it go? There was one you missed, Poppy, when the big budster came at you earlier this year and went straight through you. Yeah, I sort of, I sort of wasn't ready for it, but yeah, he definitely got through me. He's a bit of weight behind there and a bit of power. So um, yeah, he's a, he's a hard man to bring down. I think maybe the only way you can bring him down is from running him down. You had four years at Norwood and um, Nathan Bassett was uh, was your most recent coach there. He apparently had a big impact on your career, did he? Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess he, when he came in, he, he sort of said, I've seen you play and I think we can get a lot more out of you. And I said, oh, what do you think I need to do to, to get better? And he said, uh, probably, probably your body shape. Obviously, I was a lot more, obviously, working construction. Um, I was pretty stocky and had a bit too much extra muscle I was probably carrying at the time. And uh, he said, if you can get a lot fitter and run more, you got your chase downs and you, you, the stuff you can do, you bring to the game, you can do a lot more of. You made your debut with the Hawks around 7, 2011. You've played 81 of 88 games. Does that surprise you? Yeah, definitely. When you hear those numbers, obviously you don't think about it when you're trying to play every week. But yeah, it's, it's, I'm pretty surprised to be. I've played this many games. Obviously, I'm surprised I even got on an AFL list because most people don't think I was going to be able to make it. I got told many times they wouldn't even play sample footy. So really, yeah. So um, I guess now, even when I sit back and watch the recruit, I'm thinking half those guys were like me. Yeah. Uh, they working full-time jobs and trying to trying to get a go. And obviously, once you get that opportunity to be on a list, that you can do anything you want if you put your heart to it. He said, you're Laidler, oh. and I'm Piuopolo. <laughs> that was sensational. For a boy of Italian blood, you're not very excitable on the football field, are you? You just go about your business, lay the tackles, take your marks, kick the goals. Do you ever feel like sort of showing your exuberance? Uh, no, that's probably the way I am. I'm pretty quiet. Um, I don't really talk much, to be honest. Um, 
I guess that's just the way I've always been. I've been pretty shy and quiet. A good friend of yours by the name of Jason Dunstall said that a good teammate of yours, whose initials are JL, reckons that you make your mates pay part of the toll when you go down in the morning to the Peninsula Freeway. Is that right? That couldn't be right, could it? No, it's definitely not right. <laughs> so Jordan Lewis is lying, is he? Yeah, that's a lie. Someone spread that rumour about me early, <laughs> early on and they just keep going along with it. But yeah, I've got that bit of a tight ass name about me. But <laughs> I think being smart with your money is one thing. And, uh, it's different to being tight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, completely different. I've got a dilemma for you, Paul. You can be nominated for one of Goal of the Year or Tackle of the Year. Which one do you take? Definitely take the Tackle of the Year. That's great. <laughs> Mike, that was fantastic. Great to uh, learn a little about him. He's uh, a fusive, isn't he? I thought that was terrific. And, and you don't get to hear a lot of Paul Piopla. I don't, that's the first interview I've actually ever seen him do. And I, I love him as a player. I love the way he goes about his game. But I loved the interview. I thought it was really he good. He was nervous and I was nervous. I'd never <laughs> met him before. I'm thinking of, funny how many heroes is 25, isn't it? <laughs> the last great Italian at um, Hawthorne couldn't talk English, so that was fantastic. Fantastic. And good afternoon to you. Well, good evening to you, Dipper. A couple of disappointing sides in the weekend. Pies, yep. Gold Coast and the Lions. They were inexplicable. I saw the first goal and oh, I thought, yeah. how far the Lions? And then it changed dramatically. Not, how no you, idea Mike, what happened to this. How do you do this a minute and a half into the game to open the score and then get beaten by 100 points? No idea. It just this was classy movement yeah, of the football. Yep. But they gave this away, Jason. They actually played really stilted football as, as Adelaide took control. And yet... They just weren't prepared to take the risks that we saw there. Their or that confidence they did it. should have been soaring after that. Yeah, so yeah. here they go into the old it mode was, of... Yep. And after the finish around. last week. Yep. And this is... I, watched, I couldn't believe they've gone down the line and with these short sideways kicks and up the line. And then they finally get to that inevitable position at the finish where you're kicking into a crowded forward line. You kick to one of your blows against five of theirs. It's interesting, isn't I mean, it? It's just a really slow build-up yeah, there. I guess that shows you what they're capable of in patches but they can't do that throughout mm, the course mm, of the game, mm. and that's what they've got to keep working on. There was an exchange between a guy called Banana Ferrito and uh, uh -huh. an umpire whose name uh, shall remain a nameless at this stage. Michael, uh, I'm interested in your thoughts. Have a listen to this extended exchange. It's a mark, it's a mark. It's a mark, it's a mark. It's a mark. It's a mark. It's a mark. Settle down. Settle down. Listen, relax. Give him the ball now. It doesn't matter. It's a mark. What do you mean? I'm Listen. listen. Listen, listen. I've heard a better view of it, right? He's behind. So just right, so you just shh, spoil Michael. it then? Here. He clunked it. It's a mark. He clunked it. Oh, oh, it's a mark here. It's a ball. Say Only his arm. Yeah, good, good. Against you, Michael. Mark's here. Say you're kidding. Get back the other one. Is that line, the line. Line. Yes, mate. Well, I'm saying you're kidding. No, mate. It's for arguing so, decision. Well, I can't say you're kidding. I can't disagree. Decision. Can I disagree? It's the manner of doing it, mate. Are you kidding? It's the manner you're doing it. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love that, Jerry. And I've got no doubt, Mike, that that 50-metre penalty was largely attributed to the previous exchange of opinions that they'd had. But you know what? He didn't swear, Michael no. Frito. He wasn't uh, derogatory towards the umpire. And in the end, all he said was, you're kidding, and he copped a 50. That's not dissent, is it? I mean, no, it's surely dissent, not. But it's not, is it? I think you've got to allow players to let some frustration out. And no. I think both of them, like the mark, he certainly didn't clunk it. No. He spoiled it. There's one uh, lesson for um, by Donnelly, though. You don't explain yourself. I mean, no. that uh, to me is something the umpires need to address because yeah. uh, that is turning into uh, a farce. When he said he clunked it. Well, it turns into a farce. Yeah. It was dissent, Jason. Uh, and it's it about... dissent, Jerry? Oh, absolutely dissent. We've got to take a break. You're, yeah, you're going to feature on the other side because no. of your dissent to Mike Shee <laughs> in 85 minutes ago. I'll show you dissent in a minute. <laughs> 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 I remember you as a kid. I remember you uh, barrel chested, um, lots of front. Yeah. Would take a mark and hold the ball up in the air. You were playing Collingwood one day at uh, Victoria Park and you took a dummy out to Des Tudnam. Is that story true? We used to shake hands before the yep. game. Yep. And I shook his hand. He goes, Oh, he goes, What's that? I said, It's for you, brother. I said, You stop your crying all day. <laughs> he's known as the Kilgabar and he's with Mike on open uh, mic straight after look, the kick. I, I love him all. I love all the but he made me, I laughed my way the whole flow through that <laughs> half an hour. He's very, you should watch it, Jared. I will, Mike. Yeah. I never miss. Uh, tell us about <laughs> the Mad Minute because you are a bit uh, upset look, about this. Look, I, dev I was, wasn't agitated enough last week, was I? I devoured the Sunday footy shows, right. but they've got to stop ex-players doing the match review panel assessments. Couldn't agree more. Here's Exhibit A. Jared Ruffhead in trouble. Crawp, is he? No, no, he's not. Oh. That there, there's nothing in that. Surely that uh, there's going to be let go. This one here was just an accident. 
Oh, if that's not enough, let's go to Exhibit B on Channel 7. Game day. I'm just, um, I'm just concerned about the action, but I, th I think he'll be fine, and um, I think he'll be. Look, he's leading the Coleman now, and we want to see the great players out there. <laughs> Who's there? Uh, Gibson up in Canberra yesterday here on Tommy Bug. Look, I think he'll be okay there. Tom, young Turner here in his first game at school one day, and here he is making his AFL debut. But I think he'll be fine. Also, Stevie J. I think he, has, he might have to have his own area now of just stupidity that he does <laughs> these little things oh. each week. He'll be fine. Also, Varco and Subin here. Nothing in that. I think. <laughs> I, I think you're spot on, Mike. You're 100% right. We've got to stop. It's a common <laughs> trap for ex-players. It's that you've got to call it as you see it. Surely you can't. Just Andrew defend. Wells says Oscar Spisaurus has got no case to answer. <laughs> oh, I mean, thanks. this is this is. But there's one other one. What have you got? A third exhibit. Mm. You. He kicked him. Oh. Well, he pushed him with the leg. <laughs> well, what I'm saying, oh, I don't is think. It, what, look, what no, I don't think that? Was, I don't think that was a bad kick. I didn't like, say it was a. I didn't say I, it was a good kick. I called it as I saw it. He didn't kick him. They nudged him with the leg. Jared. I thought he kicked him with insufficient force. I'm, uh, That's dissent. Yeah. That is dissent. <laughs> and I reckon that uh, Chris uh, Scott will be showing lots of dissent to John if he just oversteps the mark. <laughs> yeah. Right now he's been done for kicking. Yep. Insufficient force. Kneeing, insufficient force. Punching, insufficient. You've only got so many lives, John. Yeah. You're a cat, but you haven't got that <laughs> many lives. But what about his mate Travis? Now, Travis Farco landed a very yeah. good yeah. right cross. Is that what they call it? Or right, or it whatever it was. Right, or, yeah. right on the chin. Mm. He's, lu he's lucky that Nick steven has got a tough chin. And Your took bloke it. goes out, well, yeah. Hawthorne's bloke, roughly goes out for a trip. Now, that, I know that there's danger in doing that action, but it's what might happen rather than what did happen. Farco punched him in the face. Yeah, I hear you. But I think that's why we've all got these issues with the point system and why they're going to make changes. They don't always stack up against each other. Good line they? about Oscar's Pistorius too. Yeah, nice work. Uh, you'll get his <laughs> name there correctly next week. Uh, you're going to Adelaide. I'll all be I thrilled am. to see you at the Adelaide Oval. Yeah. And Perth the week after. Who's paying? Um, who, 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 that, who are you a guest of? Is that relevant? Yes, it is, because we want to know who's going to taint your opinion next week. You've got a bit of poppy in you, have you? So, <laughs> hey? No toll to it, Great so to have you on board, you. Mike, and good to see you back in the pink. Jason, we'll see yes, you yes. through the week. Thanks for your company. We'll see you next week.